Hi there. There's been a lot of talk this week about the discovery of the so-called obesity gene. But what does it really mean? And what are its implications for people who simply want to lose weight? It's reckoned that about 70% of us have this obesity gene, which predisposes some of us to putting on weight and then having a hell of a long time trying to get rid of that weight. And it makes us more vulnerable to weight than those without the gene. However, does it really change anything for anyone trying to lose weight? I thought I'd go along and ask the very professor who discovered the gene all about it. Does this gene start to explain why, given the fact that we all live in the same environment, mm. why some people seem to have a huge problem and they can't shift it either, mm. it, it, despite everything? I think it's part of the story. I mean, uh, very important to realise this is almost certainly not the only gene that's involved in weight regulation. We've known for some time that weight and obesity are, like many conditions, partly nature, partly nurture, partly genes, partly environment. And this is not really the only gene. This is, happens to be the first gene that we found that's playing a, a pretty important role. But there will be others that undoubtedly will be discovered in the, in the months and years ahead and give us a much more of a, of a story. I mean, one of the questions that I have been asked a lot in the last few days is, is whether this explains why obesity is becoming more prevalent. And it clearly can't be. That, that has to be a consequence of the radical changes in lifestyle and diet that many people across the world are, are go, going through. But I suspect that if we'd gone back 100 years, we'd still have found that this gene was present, certainly, and we'd still have found that it was helping to decide which people in that population were heavier and which ones were lighter. Of course, very few people would have been obese in those days, or in you know, pre-war Japan or, or, or any other society to, you uh, choose to, to take as an illustration. What, of course, has happened with the environmental um, change in lives around the world is that the whole distribution of weight has shifted upwards. And this gene, just as it was before, is helping to decide where, uh, who's heavier and who's thinner. It's doing just the same now. It's just that with more people um, um, reaching the sort of figures where we consider them obese or overweight, of course, the gene is then playing a role in deciding which individuals um, meet, you know, fall into those categories. We come across this gene as part of our study we were doing to try and find actually type 2 diabetes genes originally. Uh, we very really quickly realised that this particular gene was working through an effect on weight and increasing risk of uh, obesity. And we found that the 16% of people who have two copies of the at-risk version of this gene are on average about 3 kilograms heavier, have about a 70% increased risk of uh, obesity and about a 40% risk of uh, type 2 diabetes, as compared with about the 35% who have no copies. So the, one of the interesting things about this gene is that we know very little about it. It's not a gene that has any prior form in relation to obesity. In fact, it's not a gene that anybody knows very much about at all. And that's both a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because I can't give you a nice story as to how it works and why it is that it leads to um, problems with, with weight uh, aggregation and an increased risk of uh, obesity and diabetes but it may well be a blessing because it's taking us somewhere we weren't otherwise going to get to in terms of perhaps understanding something about why it is that some people have an increased risk uh, of obesity and overweight and what the mechanisms are involved might be and of course the, the hope there is that we can then translate some of that information into both a better understanding of the condition, but also uh, novel treatments and perhaps new ways of, of intervening. Well, go on, novel treatments. I mean, what sort of treatment could this, the discovery of the gene lead to? Um, we're certainly not talking about, a uh, few people have asked me, we're not talking about altering genes or anything like that. That's, 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 that's way beyond what's possible and probably way beyond what's, what's ethical. So at the moment, one would be thinking either in terms of a drug or possibly of understanding better which particular interventions might work better in, in, in particular individuals. So once we understand what this gene does, what the molecules that are involved in translating that effect into a difference in, in weight is, whether it's working through appetite or exercise or metabolism or any of the things that it could be working through to, to influence weight, then we can um, start to look to see if there are any so-called drug targets, any, any molecules that could be a potential site for thinking about a, a drug intervention. Now, yeah, that's a long way off the history of the drugs that have previously been made available for uh, treating people who are overweight and, uh, and uh, obese and wanting to lose weight uh, haven't worked terribly well. They've all often been found to have 
very si- serious side effects, and that's uh, certainly m- made it very difficult. And one of the one of the difficulties, and certainly I'm not also desperately keen on the idea of medicalizing it, but clearly there are some people who, in whom uh, the other options for, treat- for treatment just are not effective, and for whom um, a drug therapy, if it was safe and well tolerated, would be an enormous advance.